All right, now that we know what randomness is and how we can check it, let's talk about a specific case and let's talk about Marder's universal test and uh, let's see why we define such a test. And also in the past, we made a small modification to this test. And I will, ex uh, but just by talking about it, it is a lot simpler than Marder's universal test. So this way you can see how you can define a statistical test, what it should satisfy and so on. So let's first start why we need more than one test because think about the frequency test. It just uh, calculates the weight of the binary sequence because it just counts the number of ones and see if this number is the half of the sequence length, right? If it is close to half of the sequence length, then we it will pass the test. So this is a very nice thing. So. The probability of weight being W is as follows. You have M bits, W of them should be uh, one. And uh, being one has probability one over two. So you, since we have M bits, calculating all of these, multiplying all of these probabilities give you one over two to the N. So this is the probability of a sequence being, having a W many ones. Okay, this is the probability. So, in these scenarios, we have a p-value and it is defined like this. So this way, once you calculate this p-value, you check if it is smaller or larger than a value. Okay, so you put a threshold beforehand, like 0 0.001. So if when you have a sequence, when you calculate the weight of it, just check if that weight, what kind of p-value that weight has. And it is smaller than your threshold, sorry, maybe larger, then you will say that it fails the test. Okay. So it is as a statistical test is simple as that. So you need to have a way of calculating a p value and checking if it is lower than your threshold. Okay. But the problem is that just look at this sequence. This sequence passes this test in the best way possible it gets the highest mark saying that this is the frequency is fantastic because half of them are ones and half of them are zeros so it passes this test having the highest highest score highest p value but it says but just by looking at it you know that it is not random so this is why you cannot simply just use golon's postulates and say that it is random or not so you have to check other properties to eliminate this kind of sequences saying that this is not random so this is why we need different tests. So for this reason, let's look at what Maurer uh, proposed. So in 1992, Maurer proposed the universal test, and this is closely related to the per bit entropy of a stream, okay? Designed to detect statistical defects that can be modeled by an ergodic design with finite memory. So let's see an example how Maurer's universal statistical test works. So you have, let's say that this is the sequence you have. So let's say that our block number is two. Normally, Mara's universe statistical test doesn't allow you to choose L equals to two, but as an example, I'm giving it to you. So you actually divide this into sequence of blocks of two bits, okay? Then you divide it into the uh, initialization part and the where you are going to perform the test. Now, since our block size is two, I am transferring, translating these bits to into integers. So your values will be from zero to three. So this is your new sequence. So now you look at the distances between the values. Okay, so you start with the blue part. And so your first value is one. You just check how many integers ago you have seen this value. So you are measuring the distance of your previous occurrence. So three never occurred before, so it is six. One occurred two before, one occurred one ago, one occurred one before, you know, this way you calculate this value. So now you calculate the distances. And from, of course, we you have to go to documentation and see how it defines it, but it's try to estimate this. And this from this formula, you just put these distances into this here and calculate the FM function. And then putting it to a p-value, it calculates this. So as you can see, higher is better, of course. And uh, initially, if you chose 0 0.001, let's say, 
So this value is larger than that. And you say that, okay, it passes Maurer's universal statistical test, okay? So uh, let's give a, bit, a little bit more definition about it. So you have the sequence AN of N bits. So it's the binary sequence of length N. You partition the sequence into adjacent non overlapping blocks of length L. In the example, I chose L equals to two. Then you compute the integer values of these blocks and obtain a new sequence, TIs, where K equals to N divided by L. So now we turn them into integers. Just recall that this is what I did. I chose L2, I divided into blocks, then I calculate the integer values. So this is what it says here. The remaining bits at the end of the sequence are discarded. The first Q blocks of TN is called initialization part. The remaining K blocks are called the test part. So in our example, uh, initialization part was represented as red and the test part was represented as blue. For every block in the test part, we calculate the distance of that block to its previous occurrence. If we denote these distances by CI, the, the test statistic Fn is actually the multiplication of logarithms of these distances. But you sum of you sum all of these values and divide it, it with one over k. You can see that this looks very similar to the definition of entropy I gave you a few slides ago. Okay. So the reference distribution for the test statistic is the half normal distribution. The p-value is obtained from this calculation. Again, I'm just giving you the results. You cannot just understand this just by looking at the uh, slides. You have to go to the documentation and understand why this is the case. But at the end, you calculate this value from the variance of L and this value. And the p-value is actually calculated from the error function like this. So ERFC, you can find a, a very nice implementation in C. Uh, I think Knut's implementation was on there, uh, but it is not hard to find it. So you can easily write these codes and just by calculating the distances here, you can actually calculate all of these and obtain the p-value. So if the obtained p-value is less than the probability of type one error, which is a small value between 0 0.01 and 0 0.001, this is your choice. Actually, you're actually choosing something to you know see, because if you choose this, this means that uh, random values will fail this test with a probability one over a hundred. If you choose this, a random value will fail this test with a probability of one over 1,000. Okay. We assume that the sequence is obtained from a non-random resource if it is higher than this value. Okay. So uh, in the NIST document, it says that uh, if your sequence length is larger than this many bits, you choose the block size as 6. You know, first 640 bits are the uh, initialization part, then you use the remaining part for the test. So this means that you can use this test only when your input sequence is larger than this many length, okay? But this is, this is not a good thing because, for instance, I want to check the uh, randomness of a block cipher, and my block cipher has a block size of 128 bits. So I will produce random numbers of length 128 bits, but I cannot use this test to check that length, right? It has to be something very long. So just by looking at this, we decided to propose something else that also measures a similar thing. So what we uh, proposed was an alternative approach, which actually gets rid of the initialization part because we lose a lot of data when we have the initialization part. So if a number appears for the first time, set distance to zero. This is what we proposed. So our alternative solution is like this. We have the same sequence. Let's choose the block size two. Now I don't have an initialization part. I convert all of them into integers. Then I calculate the distance. So one appears for the first time. So distance is zero and so on and so forth. Now I calculate the distances. Now I have to propose a way of uh, measuring the you know randomness of these distances. So what we uh, proposed was this. 
Okay, this explains what I mentioned in the example. You know, uh, choose the block size, turn them into blocks and calculate the integer values, obtain the distances. If the integer TR is its first occurrence in the sequence, just assign the value zero to CI. So this is the uh, theoretical part where we calculate the probability. If CI is R for some I, this means that TI and TI minus R are the same integers and the integers between them are different than TI, right? Because this is the distance value. The probability of such a situation is this. Uh, you know, you have to use some pen and paper to calculate this, but trust me, the probability is this. Note that since T1 is the first element of the sequence, T and C1 must be always zero. So if we go back to the peak example, this has to be zero regardless of this value. Similarly, C2 is either zero or one. Thus a distance R in the sequence CI can be observed only in K minus R different places. Hence the expected number of appearance of the value R in the sequence is like this, K, Ki minus R multiplied by this probability. So we have the expected value. So the number of appearance of zero in the CN sequence is equal to number of distinct integers. We will consider the cases when the probability of every possible integer value is not appearing in TN is less than this value. So we assume that everything appears at least once. Hence to perform the test, the largest block size L can, that can be chosen for the sequence with length K is the largest L value satisfying the following equation. So this is our choice. So, if let the i denote the number of appearance of the value i in the sequence cn, we apply the test by calculating di's and performing chi-square of goodness of fit test to di and expected values. So this chi-square testing works like this. So you per, you calculate the distances, you know. So you write the number of appearances of those distances, and we also have the expected value which I actually calculated here. So this is a value I know because I know L, R and K, right? So this is something I can calculate. So this is the theoretically calculated value. This is the observed value. So now we want to check how the observed values fit into the expectations. This is what actually chi-square of goodness of fit test means. So you simply uh, subtract these two values, take the square and divide it with the expected value. This is from the Def this is the definition of chi-square actually. Then you sum all of this. The p-value is obtained from the gamma q function of this chi-square divided by two and d divided by two. D is the degree of freedom. And in our scenario, it's k minus one because we have k many values. You have k minus one uh, freedom. So we modified the uh, Maurer's test and now we can uh, measure the we can perform this test on sequences as short as 66 bits by choosing the block size two. And if you the length increases, you can choose larger blocks. So this is important because if we go back to Maurer's test, you can see that in order to choose block size as 16, the length of the sequence must be really high. So this was actually a problem because there was a very bad random number generator where the Maurer statistical test could detect it only if you could choose L something like 26 or something. But if you choose it 26 or 20 or something, you know that you have to generate a very large sequence. So we actually, uh, this R modification allows us to detect this kind of, you know, uh, bad random number generators with uh, generating you know, smaller length uh, outputs compared to the original Maurer's test. This is the difference that we had. So for comparison, you can see that we modified the test. There is no initialization part in our method, which allows us to test the whole sequence without wasting any parts of the sequence. In Maurer's universal test sequences, which are shorter than this number, which is more than 300,000 bits, cannot be tested. However, our approach can be applied to test sequences as short as 66 bits. Maurer's test is not suitable for block size length larger than 16 bits. This number is increased to 22 in our method. And we also measured the 
you know, running time of this test on the same CPU and observed that our method actually, since we perform less amount of operations, you obtain the results faster in our case. So this way you actually can propose a new statistical test, okay? This is how actually uh, statistical test suits born. You this define some kind of test and this test should somehow check different properties of the sequence. This way you can detect non-random behavior. So this way you can define many different tests. Of course, if two tests are measuring the same thing, like the frequency of the uh, sequence, then you don't need both of them. Because if one sequence passed the one test and the automatically test the second one, then you don't need the second test anyway, okay? This way, when you design a test suite, you have to choose what kind of properties you should check and then choose the uh, number of tests that you are going to perform. 